Howdy, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris and tonight we're unboxing a new telescope. So as you can see, it's quite long. I don't know, I've had, I put up a post yesterday about this and tried to get people to guess what was in this and my other boxes that I've got. And the main, the main thing people were guessing was it's a big long tripod, but what it actually is, is a long achromatic refractor. And I'm gonna use that to sort of diversify what I do on the channel a little bit, because it's all purely been about deep sky imaging in the observatory. But I like to touch on lots of different areas of astronomy and uh, this is going to allow me to do some planetary and lunar stuff out the front where the planets are because I can't view them from the observatory and it's also going to be good for my kids as well because a big long refractor you tilt it up towards the heavens and that brings the eyepiece down to the height of children and when it's placed on a, a sturdy equatorial mount with a motor drive it's going to track the planet so when you swap over with your kids or doing outreach with someone you get the the planet or whatnot in the eyepiece and if it's not a tracked mount you swap over and by the time the other person's focused that object is gone so let's open it up and have a look and I'll talk to you about some of the features that it's got. Okay, so here it is. It's quite a beast. It weighs about 5.1 kilograms with the rings and dovetail and has quite a generous size dovetail bar on the bottom. It's a Vixen style standard dovetail, but sometimes it, they can be quite short on refractors and this is a nice long one to sort of help with balance. But you can also move the, the rings up and down the tube as well to help with balance. So there shouldn't be any problems with balance this, balancing this telescope in declination on the EQ5 mount that I've got for it. Focuser wise, it's a basic two inch focuser and it's single speed, it's not dual speed. You wouldn't expect it at this price point, I don't think. Pretty much you can pay a lot more than this entire telescope for an upgraded focuser. So it's, it's a basic, but certainly workable focuser with lots of travel, as you can see on the draw tube. And there'll be a two inch to one inch, two to 1.25 inch adapter. And this telescope comes with a two inch diagonal and a 50 mil finder, which must be in the box at the back here. So let me pop this down somewhere for a sec. Use these bits of foam. Excellent. So we've got another box here and this will have the accessories in. So that's the finder stalk for the 50 mil finder. And this will be the finder itself in here. Where's that knife gone? Okay, so generous size, 50 by nine, 50 by eight finder. And the way you install this is it comes with a rubber O-ring. Let's get this a bit closer so I can show you. So these are the components, the finder stalk, the rubber O-ring and the finder. So we pop the, the O-ring over onto the groove that's on the finder. I'll show you that in a sec. So there's a groove there that we'll just slot into. There we go. And then this has got, it's got three screws, two threaded and this thing here, just kind of, it's like a spring loaded, it's a spring loaded plunger. So if you hold that in and pop that over there, that's actually, that's, uh, I'm just gonna do those bolts more so it's easy to get on. So pull the plunger out, slot this in like so, and then we can just use these screws to adjust the finder in line with the optics of the telescope. 
There we have it. We can pop that on the telescope now. Okay, just to illustrate, you just pop the finder onto the inbuilt finder shoe on the focuser and just tighten up the screw like so. So yeah, quite a sizable finder for this telescope, it's good. The other thing you get is a nice big two inch diagonal. So accessory wise, it's pretty decent considering the price of the telescope. There's a two inch diagonal, even a basic non dielectric coated one can't be that cheap. <laughs> so it's, it's a substantial accessory that. Comes with a two inch to 1.25 inch adapter on there, so you can use both two inch and 1.25 inch standard eyepieces. It has thumb screws instead of compression, instead of a br brass compression ring fitting. Okay, the dovetail is not orientated how it should be, but just to give you an idea of how the diagonal looks in the focuser. Right, without dropping this, I'm just repositioning the rings so they're orientated correctly. Let's do those back up. So I want the dovetail kind of below the focuser. There we go. That's better. So there we have it with the finder, two inch diagonal, and that's kind of how big it looks. I'm five foot 11, so it gives you some kind of idea of the size of it. And yeah, I think it's got 33% more light grasp than the four inch version, because they do an Evo Star 102 mil, and that comes with a 30 mil finder, which is smaller. So, you do get the bigger finder with the 124.75 inch model. So the final accessory you get, as well as the 50mm finder and the 2 inch diagonal, is two eyepieces and these are the standard ones that come with a lot of Skywatch telescopes, the Super 10 and the Super 25mm. And these will give, the 10mm will give a magnification of 100 and the 25mm will give a magnification of 40 So ideally, because this doesn't include a Barlow lens or anything, ideally you need either a Barlow lens to bring that up to that 10mm up to um, the equivalent of a 5mm, which will give you 200 times, which would be much better for like the planets and things. Because the 10mm isn't that good quality, I think you're better off buying a, a decent upgrading and buying a, a third eyepiece, a decent 5mm, which will give you 200 times. So yeah, these are okay to get you started, but it's not going to get you particularly close to the planets. And this is a very much a planetary lunar double star scope, as well as bright deep sky objects. So yes, And also something like a, a fringe killer or a semi apo filter, just to take the the edge off that chromatic aberration, that purple fringing you get on the bright objects with a classic refractor, because the crown and flint elements of a classic refractor can't compensate for all the wavelengths of light and focus them in the same spot, like modern extra low dispersion glass does on the ED refractors. Uh, the ED equivalent of this is much more expensive, over a thousand pound more expensive, so. Okay, I think we'll wrap things up on that note. Thank you very much for watching. This has been an overview of the Skywatch Evo Star 120 Achromatic Refractor. Very much looking forward to getting up to all sorts of things with this telescope on the channel. Uh, thanks as always for watching and a special thanks to my channel members, Dan the Man and the Four Grapples. So until next time, take care and please remember to tell those clouds to sod off. <laughs>